Greetings, family. Welcome back to my channel. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we got the verdict, fam, or did we? Karen, you telling the truth? Are you telling the truth? I don't know. It's something in my spirit saying something still not right, but we shall see. Um, <laughs> oh, this was a good episode, family. Come on now. Let's get into it. <laughs> Last week with Q getting his behind whooped and it was so deserved. I'm like, I love this side of Calvin. I really hope that they had a, gotten a confession out of him. Um, but like uh, Sabrina explained to him a little later that it wouldn't have worked if she had recorded anything because he was under duress. So they scared him enough to get him out of the apartment, but he was pissed and he says, you know, he's gonna come back after them. And they have to be really mindful um, of, you know, just, just, I think that Calvin really needs to call the authorities and, you know, have, um, you know, get out of the apartment and find another place because I don't think it's necessarily safe for either one of them with Q around. I don't think he wants to mess up the fact that he's out under these particular contingencies with the feds um, for putting them away. But at the same time, Sabrina's out. So he knows he's facing danger and it's a sticky situation. So I really don't think that he is going to want to mess with that now that she's out. So I don't think he's going to come back, but they still need to, to watch it. But they were really shooken up. But I know Sabrina is appreciative that Calvin had her back in this. So now our girls are at the doctor's office. And finally, it's revealed. They're asking her, well, okay, now who's the father? And she's dragging this thing out. I'm like, girl, come on. I don't know what's going through Karen's mind. But she said, okay, you don't want to say anything now. That's okay. That's what Andy said. And Danny like, no, no, we, what do you think we're here for? Ain't no, you to say it in due time. Like, girl, tell us who the father is. And Danny's looking through her phone like, I'm going to look at my calendar and see who you with. Because she, she may very well know since they that close. Um, Let me see. Let me take my own guess. Andy's like, no. She was like, well, who is it? So she was like, it's Zach's. Just like I thought, it's Zach's. And so um, <laughs> Danny's looking at her like, mmm. Are you sure? <laughs> look at that look on it. Like, you sure? And she's like, yes, it's Zach. So Andy looking at her like she knows she's suspect. And in my gut, I'm not feeling it. I don't think she's telling the truth. But so be it. She says it is. So Andy's like, you know, you're going to tell him. She said, yeah, you know, I'm going to tell him. But right now she's focusing on going back to work. And she'll deal with that situation later. But as we know... Um, I'm not too sure if that calculation is right. I don't think Karen wants to be wrong in this and she will ride this out, but we will see if that's actually the case. Now, um, Sabrina's sitting back stressed. It's a lot has happened, um, to really shake up bad enough. She was going through the traumatic experience of being locked up, but now she has to deal with the fact of what happened with Q and she's really you know, a little nervous that Calvin, you know, he doesn't try anything or he goes to jail or get in any trouble for that. And he like, I wish a so-and-so would. Like, no, don't worry about it. I love you. I got your back. Don't stress. And she's really, you know, nervous, wondering about Maurice because, you know, Maurice is a good friend to both of them. And, you know, they're hoping that maybe Andy could do something and help him like he helped her. And she's just so grateful for him being there for her and you know it was a very tender moment between calvin um and sabrina um and who knows who knows how that will happen when it comes to their friendship or their relationship but she left and calvin's there i guess thinking on her so now fatima gets a call at the front desk and the receptionist saying her boo thing is there to see her at work and he gets to see her office, I guess, is the first time. He like, this your office? She like, yes. So he wanted to let her know about, you know, the fact that he went to go see the attorney. And she was like, good. And 
he let her know that the attorney basically um, told her, told him that um, he needs to make nicey with the ladies, baby mamas, um, so to protect himself and that money. And she says, smart attorney. Um, that was some good advice. So he was like, he going to set up a meeting and go to Karen's shop, um, to have a conversation on the situation. And she's like, uh, no, that ain't happening. Uh, no, no, no. You bringing her to our house and deal with this. He was like, okay, okay, fine. Same thing with Heather. She was like, oh yeah, you trying to go, <laughs> you made a joke about going to the, no, I want to go to the strip club. She was like, uh, really? So, you know, Fatima ain't having that Zach, stop playing. So... He says, okay, great idea. Um, we'll deal with that um, as far as uh, meeting with the ladies. We'll have that meeting. But, you know, <laughs> he was going uh, off because Fatima's crazy. And, you know, don't have your woman catch a case because you know she will when it comes to you and these women. So watch it. When it comes to her man, Fatima don't play. So when they trying to discuss this and how they're going to deal with this whole issue, here comes Hayden, and he like, oh, God. He's like a thorn in our side. I'm like, this little man boy is aggravating. So he comes in and was like, oh, I see you here. You don't care nothing about no restraining order. She was like, yeah, you know that's a, a restraining order. You can't, you know, let stick. So get over it. So he was like, well, you saved me some money, Zach. And so basically he's telling him you got served. So being that you here with all these witnesses, whether you want to accept it or not, you are served. Zach made a little joke about his breath being <laughs> stink, but you know he got to take his little digs where he can't stand him. So he's like, get out of here with that. So he's like, you better, basically better tell, you know, your uh, ex-con boyfriend here that he has to accept this. But So he was like, okay, I'll deal with it. And Fatima told him, you know, it's okay. You know, take it. And Andy comes in. And they got to do their little work. And he said, I got to go now, bae. And she was like, yeah, this is my boss, so you got to go. He tried to get his little kiss, but wasn't working. So he was like, I better get out of here, you know, because when I'm too close around women or something, they tend to get pregnant. So I'm little joke. She's like, what? So um, Fatima basically told Andy she did the assignment or whatever that she asked her to do. So she thanked her and said she's going to visit Robin. So she goes to Robin's office and he looks at her and was like, um, <laughs> do we make, do you have an appointment or something slick? And she was like, excuse me. And he kind of like laughed it off. You know, he had to get back at her with how she's been doing him. So they sat down and spoke and she wanted to know, you know, thank him for the situation with Sabrina. And she said, you sure, you know, um, she's not going to run. He was like, no, I got your back. Um, that's good, you know, squared away. She's not going to do anything. So he let her know about the situation with, um, the takeover. Now he thought she was playing dumb when she didn't know what he was talking about. And he was like, you don't know. And she was like, no, I don't. And he explained to her that, yeah, I mean, there's a situation with, uh, Hayden and Andy, I mean, Hayden and Gary wanting to take over the company. Now, for some reason, she, you know, she knew about a, a takeover because Gary slightly mentioned that. So I don't know if she was just playing dumb, I guess, but she said, no, she didn't know about it. But now she's getting the details that they're trying to take the company up from him. And I guess they have enough votes that they would need. Um, and then she, he also mentioned how, you know, he gave her that million and a half, but he was like, with the 14 million he would need, that that's really nothing. And so she really felt bad for him. And I'm like, you know, when it comes to Robin, at first I was a little suspect with him, but I realize now he really did like Andy. Um, and even with the mess that's going on with her and Gary, he still looked out for her with that money. Um, and now it's a situation where he says he has other companies, so, you know, that's not an issue if he loses that one. But... She said, you know what, um, she really uh, appreciates him looking out. Um, she made a comment about him not feeling like, I guess, she's some type of prize that she can win, I guess, when it comes to her, him and Gary. But he was like, no, I don't ever want you to think that. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, he cares, and I felt real bad. You know, he was looking like he was really in a bad situation, and her eyes was a little misty and felt a little sad for him. But, 
she was like, what I think you should do is fight. I think you need to fight this out. And I hope that Andy, at the end of the day, will help him fight for his company because her girl would have still been locked up if it wasn't because of him. So he's been there for you and he hasn't hurt you like Gary has. So wake up, Andy, and show some gratitude. And I hope you look out for a brother because, um, yeah, he deserves it. So now you have um, Karen back at work and Pam like, oh, you here? And she like, yes, I'm here. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I know I've been out, but I'm here to work. I got a clean bill of health from uh, the doctor. So, you know, I'm pretty good. So she was like, okay. And so she told him, you, you know, told her that, you know, she's expecting uh, Aaron or she called Aaron. So he may be coming through. Um, so I guess to expect him. So she's going in the back, I guess, to get some work done. And she was like, here you go, uh, Aaron. Hey, you know, Aaron calls and you come running with your tail between your legs or something sarcastic. She said to him, he was like, I'm concerned about how she's doing. And that's why I'm here. So now in the meantime, you have our girl Fatima calling up her cousin, Madam, because one thing she's sick of is Hayden. He done ser you know, served her man in her office and she wants to deal with him. So she contacted Madam and said, find me baddest chick you got um, that will, you know, play this role and come after Hayden with all he got. And so she's getting this decoy to come there and act like she needs his help with a case. And, you know, <laughs> get him real in hook, line, and sinker. Um, don't play with my girl. Don't play with my girl. She ain't for the mess, Hayden. Now we have Aaron. Of course, you know, he is ready to find out what happened at this doctor's office. And he sits down and he sees her expression. And he basically came to the conclusion that Zach's the father. So she says, yes. He's like, are you sure? You know, now my man is down in the dumps. And, you know, he's been there. I mean, Karen, I, I hope uh, you telling the truth about this time and situation. It's still not 100%. And she told him that, like the doctor says, but she's pretty sure that it is. And you acting like you all choked up and you care about how uh, Aaron feels about this situation. When I really don't think you do. I think you're absolutely ecstatic and happy that it was exactly how you wanted it. That Zach's the father. So, you know, Aaron's a little down in the dumps on this. And she said, you know, asked him if he was okay. And he said, yeah. And I mean, you are, are definitely cut from a whole different cloth, Aaron, the way you handling this. But do you think that he is not going to go back to his doctor friend? Really? And not really find out if that test was right and exact? I don't think Aaron's going to let this go. Put in the comments what you think. You think he's going to let it go? I don't think so. But, you know, he talked to her. And told her that, yes, reaffirmed her that she's okay because he asked, she asked again. Um, and he said, yeah, um, why wouldn't I be when this beautiful child is going to come from you or through you or something like that? You know, all the rainbows and butterflies over Aaron's head. You know, he's all googly for her. He don't see nothing else. Even if he ain't the father, he don't care. He's still going to be there. And she looking like, who, who is this man? Who is this man? So... Sabrina's coming in and um, Karen bringing her, but Karen no leave. I'm, I mean, Pam no leave. I'm like, Pam, this is none of your business. I don't know if Sabrina wants you to know all this. So she's telling her, um, you know, that she want her to do her hair. Um, and so Pam's like, well, I like your natural hair. And she's like looking at her like, mm, that's none of your business. Like, what's wrong with that? And that's when I'm listen looking at the uncomfortable situation of Pam, how you need to be out of there. So. Karen looks at her and basically says, you know, Pam, go, you know, leave it alone. So um, Karen does a temperature check and asks how she's doing. And she basically tells her, like, how do you think I'm doing? I'm just locked up on federal charges for something I did not do. And Karen tells her how sorry she is that she's going through all of this. And this is when I was really heartbroken, almost shed a tear myself over this um, with Sabrina because I feel so bad. When you are sitting in, in prison looking at damn near life for something you didn't do. And she was so hurt. She said, what do you think how I feel? I'm, I'm traumatized. 
But can you do my hair? Um, because even though I like it natural, this is not something that was my decision. These people forced this upon me. And she said, of course. And you know she's going to look out for her girl and have her looking fly and give her locks back. That's what she do. So now here comes Miss Decoy. Thanks to Cousin Madam. She's waiting in the lobby. Fatima goes again. Fatima was rocking that blue. I must say, a sister always on point when it comes to the fashion. So she says, you know, um, you know, my cousin sent you. And, you know, she looking at her looking like you real, looking real good. Just what I would need for Hayden. Because I know he's going to take you hook, line, and sinker. And she's like, wait, what is this about? And she said, didn't my cousin fill you in? And she said, yes. So Fatima's trying to tell her what she wants her to do as far as seducing this man and basically getting, you know, acting like you need him for a case, but basically get your claws in him. And so, you know, she's coming a little ghetto. <laughs> Fatima's like, oh no, because he's going to find you out in a heartbeat and know something wrong if you don't come right. She has to come classy. So she knew how to do the whole Beverly Hills little snooty thing. She knew how to talk the proper diction. And she said, okay, perfect. Um, you know, I, I know you got this. So she said, yeah, don't worry about it, girl. I got you. I know how to play the role. And I'm sure Madam would not send somebody that won't be on point. So don't worry, Fatima. I think she got this. Hopefully she don't slip up. So Hayden get the call that she's waiting out there. And of course, my man, like, who is this? You know, I'm too important to be dealing with people I do not expect. So he, she comes out and he peeps out how beautiful she is. And he is... <laughs> Already got that little smile. Now, you know, Hayden, I cannot stand you and your character. You are the troll that you are on this show, but you are a nice looking brother. So, um, and you have a beautiful smile. So I, I digress. I will give you that much credit. But <laughs> Hayden's like, um, okay, who sent you? And she was like, I had, you know, a friend of mine said you're really good and you can help me. And he was like, well, who is this person? And she couldn't tell. And I don't know why you wouldn't continue to dig and find out who sent you, but she said, you know, once she stroked him and told him how handsome he was, he ate it up. Look at that smile. <laughs> he ate it up and he's like, uh, okay, well, um, come on this way. I can certainly help you after she done stroked his male ego and they go in the office and Fatima's coming by and found out that he took the bait and she is so happy. She said, okay, girl, work your magic so we can get him. <laughs> yes, 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 girl, get him. Now, back at the OK Corral, a.k.a. TSA at the airport, <sighs> here goes Q. Now, his body is hurting. He's been beat up. But he lies and tells Danny that the guy at the airport, her assaulter, was out there. And now she's, like, freaking out. Look at the expression on her face. Like, he's still lurking. She said, yeah. But I, I dealt with him, you know, I beat his behind, even though he got some licks on me. I handled that. Um, and a nice a thank you would be suffice. And she looked at him like, I told you not to do anything and leave it alone. He's like, what? Because <laughs> what Q wants to do is lie and get her on his good side. Because A, he needs another place to live. And B, that's his thing, you know, trying to use and manipulate women. So, of course, or men, he don't care either way. So the bait didn't uh, work and she was a little pissed off with him and agitated because I already had a man came at me crazy. You're not going to come at me crazy, too. So you better go and get your cart ride and move on. And he tried to say, I can walk you to the parking lot. And she's like, no, I'm good, because he was either going to try to attack her or sweet talk her to move into her place. And, and, and it ain't going down, Q. Move on. So now here we go. Um. Fatima came to check on Andy, see if everything was cool. She said, yeah. She said, because I saw you coming out, uh, you know, went in Robin's office. Is everything okay? And she says, yeah. And she says, um, are you sure? And she said, yeah, he, he knows. Even after all that that went on and the incident she knew about, um, he knows what he did wrong and he apologized. So she said, okay, cool. Now, Miss Observant Andy realizes uh, there's a little print on Fatima's finger. So after she smoothed that whole situation out and figured everything's cool, she's like, uh, wait a minute, what's up with that? Because as you see how her hand is positioned, 
she sometimes wear the rings and take it off. So she questioned her about it. So she was like, oh, oh, this is nothing. And tried to hurry up and tiptoe and sashay her little behind out of there. And Andy like, oh, no, no, no. You're going to sit your ass down. Sit down. Because she wants the 411 on what's up with that fingerprint. And that ring was on your finger. So now the cat's going to be out. And old girl going to know that our sister is engaged. Now here we go. The prosecutor's going hard because he knows Sabrina got pulled. She got somebody to get her out. So Maurice is his only chance. So he was like, you know, give up Sabrina Holland. Um, this is your chance. You know, she did it. She blamed you. He was like, she would never do that to me. He was like, well, she did. She gave you up. She's out. And he could not believe that Sabrina is out. He was So that really took a turn. Once he realized she's still not in there with him, it's like, are you really telling me this right now? So he said, the only chance you got now is to save yourself. Give her up and you can be out of here. Because at first he was like, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not doing that. He was like, sign this paper and you can be up out of here in less than an hour. And he was like, an hour? Are you for real? So now the point is, did my friend really give me up? Is this guy telling the truth? And I know he's catching it in there because jail is not the place for Maurice and it's stressful and he wants to go. But he told him, you're looking at 30 years and Maurice like, you got to be crazy or one hour and you're out. So sign. And he gives him the pen. So I'm like, are you really going to do this, Maurice? Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't give your girl up. Let's keep the faith. Pray that you will be out of there soon. And you're rescued. And you can switch places with Q. I hope that's the case. Fam, let's get into it Um, for next week. It's going to be a very, very crazy episode. Um, Will Q sign that paper? Uh, We're going to get into it with the situation with this meeting with Zach and Fatima and Karen, which you know is going to be crazy. And we know that Q is not going to give up when it comes to going after Danny. Listen, Q, you might as well forget it because I do not think a sister is going to fall for that mess, especially after what she just been through. And she's trying to rekindle things with Preston. So let's get ready for next week's episode. Fam, have an amazing week. Stay authentically you. Until next time, peace.